So this was my idea, actually, and Jason was kind enough to, to join me on this. So I wanted to do this because I'm a huge fan of Cashly, which is actually a relatively new app for iPhones. Um, but I've become a huge supporter of them. I've, I've got the T-shirt. Um, <laughs> I've got a couple of Geo coins from the developer. I met him at Geo Woodstock. Uh, and I just thought there's a, it's a great app. I just thought there was a need for maybe some more of a tutorial around how it works. So glad you are all here today. So uh, go ahead. Next slide. So we're going to go through the uh, background of Cashly, an overview of it, talk about live map, cache page, maps and navigation, offline maps and lists, logs, trackables, friends, and profile information. Next. All right, so let's kind of give a little bit of a background on Cashly. Uh, next. So it was created and developed by Nick Hubbard. Um, he is uh, an app, he's a geocacher, and he is also a mobile app developer. He actually, um, in all honesty, only has about, um, I think, like 150 finds, <laughs> so not a ton, but he's a great mobile app developer, and that's what he does in his day, in his day job. Uh, so one of the things we're going to talk about, especially as it relates to the difference between Cashly and CGO, is um, it uses the geocaching.com API, and um, Roby is uh, a API experts. So do you want to just explain to everyone what API is and what it means and why it matters? Well, okay, so, so first of all, all geocaching apps use APIs. But they, they have, but geocaching.com has one called Geocaching Live. It's been around for a few years. It is their way of allowing third party developers like Cashly to hook into their website without having to use you know, tighter controls. So basically an API is basically all it is is a way for an application to talk to the back end Geocaching servers. It's kind of like the installation manager for security reasons and things like that. So the, the classic app uses their original API, which uh, is not geocaching live, and then other apps other than basically CGO, all other geocaching apps, the new free one, the geocaching free round three, uh, all the third party ones except for CGO, they use geocaching live. And what that means is there's certain restrictions that all uh, applications kind of suffer from because of that. So if you're a basic member, and I, I don't know, it's really explain what the, the basic you know, your member. Well, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, go ahead and explain okay. the difference. So, so when you first start geocaching, if you don't want to pay for a membership, that's okay. That's what we call a basic membership, and anybody can be a basic member. And that's fine. You just register on your client. And then they have uh, paid memberships, of course, if you want to do that more seriously. There are restrictions that are on the uh, live APIs that will, if you're a basic member, restrict certain caches you can look for. So when you say search in this area, you won't see anything that's a, a non-traditional, so you won't find multi-caches or virtuals or anything else, you'll just find the traditionals. And if it's over a certain difficulty rating, like the, or terrain rating of above the 1.5, it won't show up in the search. Now, you can search by GC code, which is the unique identifier for geocaches, and that will still come up, but there are limits on that too. So that is one of the big differences. Now, CGO is kind of a web page scraper. It goes to the actual website and reads the actual web pages and scrapes the data off of it. And because of that, it doesn't suffer from those, I guess we'll call them artificial limitations. Right. Because on the website, you can see any geocache that's ever been published as long as it's not a premium cache. That's, that was always the important distinction. Um, there's a lot of caches that are frankly not premium, actually, so it's not a problem. But, but again, that is a restriction that, that it, that is out there on the live APIs, and people go, oh, Cashly doesn't support, I can't find a multi. Well, you can, you just have to enter GC code specifically. Right. Right. And again, all geocaching apps now suffer from this exact same problem, even GroundSpeaks app, even Cashly, you name it, they all have the same problem if they use those APIs. It's only CGO that gets away with not doing it because they don't yeah. use those APIs. <laughs> they, they go around the system, which is kind of nuts. Yep. So that's, that's the fundamental difference. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, the API is actually no longer for new developers. So if someone said, hey, I'd love to make a new app myself, that window was closed. So fortunately, Nick was actually able to sign up to be one of the developers and, and access that official API several years ago. The first version, though, actually re released December 11, 2015. And now we are on version 2.0.2, which released January 5, 2017. So the app is relatively new, but there's been a lot of updates in that time. Uh, he is working on new updates regularly. 
Um, he has been featured on some podcasts, including Geocaching Podcast, Geocache Doc, uh, Geo Gearheads, and then also uh, through the Geocaching Vlogger. If you're not familiar with any of those, there are actually some really good podcasts, and Geocaching Vlogger is on YouTube. He's got some great videos as well. There's other vloggers out there. Um, I think Geocaching Vlogger is really the, the premier vlogger, but anyway. Um, so there is a website, cashly.com. It's available in nine languages. It's only available uh, for iOS, for iPhone for now. Um, a lot of people have asked about, how do I, how do we get this on Android? Um, it would actually require building the whole app from scratch. So he is working on a GoFundMe campaign for an Android build. It's probably a couple of years out though still. Um, the app is $4.99. Um, he is a volunteer. He's doing this of his own time. Um, it's actually a really great deal for all the features that you get, which is why we're going to talk about that. Um, it does not yet integrate with the Apple Watch. Uh, the reason why is that the Apple Watch does not have an internal compass. So that kind of defeats the purpose of having you know, geocaching app if you can't tell which direction you're supposed to be going. So hopefully in the future, but we're not there yet. Um, geocaching stickers for iMessage, so little um, uh, emoticon or emojis rather, that, ha that are geocaching oriented is a, a, another app that he developed for iMessage. Um, and he said a new update is coming soon on that. I should also add that um, before I, in developing this presentation, the dev developer reviewed it and said, yeah, this makes sense, or no, this isn't quite right. So he knows I'm doing this. He's in full support of me. Um, so let's talk about the live map, because this is really what's most important. So, and this is kind of goes back to the API that Roby was talking about. Uh, so the caches do not load as you move around the map. So as you are scrolling through the map, you actually have to refresh in order to see ca new caches in that area. That is a limitation of the API that's probably not going to change. Um, but there are a lot of cool features on the map. Can you click the next? Yeah, so one of them is the cache radius. So, um, so if you'll see, there's those circles around each cache. And this is an option that you can turn on or off. That's a tenth of a mile, so if you want to place a geocache, it's an easy way to see what space is available, which is I, I, it's a really cool feature. It can be a little bit noisy um, from a graphics perspective, so you can turn that on or off in settings. Uh, next. Uh, DNFs. Uh, this is kind of one of my love-hate <laughs> things about Cachely. So if you look at this um, sad face right there, um, so you'll see not only, so you'll see that it's a DNF because of the sad uh, frown spot, smile and it's blue, but you'll also see the geocache type. Um, again, another option that you can turn on or off. Um, cache type. So we've got uh, green for traditional, we've got blue for uh, puzzle, uh, virtuals uh, show up as white. Uh, so all those kinds of symbols that you're used to seeing on the regular uh, map. This is a great feature, corrected chords. Um, in the official app, if you solve a puzzle, you actually have to go into the waypoints to see where the final is. As soon as you enter in corrected chords, and we'll talk about how to do that in a little bit in Cashly, see that triangle right there? That is actually where the final of that puzzle is. Um, so that's great. So you can actually see where the puzzle finals are on your map. And it, it's identified as corrected by having that uh, triangle in the middle. If there was a traditional that had corrected chords, um, it would also have the red triangle in, in the middle. Um, or same if you have a multi and you have, you have uh, the, the final, that would also show up uh, with the red triangle. Uh, cache overview. So when I click on a cache, so we're looking at uh, the Happy St. Patrick's Day, uh, so you'll see all of this information right um, as, you, uh, as it pulls up. So you'll see, uh, go ahead and click the next. So you'll see the name, obviously, the geocache type, the distance, uh, number of trackables, uh, in this case it's zero, number of favorite points, notes. So if you added notes on uh, the cache page in um, on geocaching.com or in the, in the app, it'll show up with the little notes icon. Uh, this is a premium cache. You see the difficulty and terrain rating, the size of the cache, and then the GC code. So you get a lot of information just as soon as you pull up the cache on the map. Okay, go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so um, one of the other great things, and a lot of this is, I'm going to compare this to the, the current app, the app that's going to be ongoing, not the classic app, because again, that's going to be retired. Um, you get a lot of search options. Uh, so I, I can toggle these on or off. So cache name, 
Uh, you can exclude your fines, exclude your hides, uh, premium only. Uh, you can choose the cash type, uh, cash publish date, the size, all different kinds of ways to, to search. Uh, also, a lot of different ways to sort. Uh, you can choose by cash type, container size, number of favorites. Um, you can also, in the, uh, the search options, there's a way to search by uh, number of favorites, so you can see all the favorites in your, your particular area that you're in. So go ahead and go to the next slide. So let's talk a little bit more about the actual cache page. So going back, so if we, if we've, we're on the map, we've clicked on a geocache, and then we click on it again, it's going to bring up this kind of main cache page. So you'll see that we've, uh, in this case, I found this. It gives me the date that I found it. I have a navigation option. We've got uh, the name, who it was hidden by. Uh, this right here, we'll get into this a little bit later. That name, if I can actually click on that. I can look at Fry Guy's profile. And there's some really cool stuff in there. Um, so we've also got, obviously, the difficulty terrain rating, the coordinates, number of trackables, favorite points, and then uh, description hint logs. So here is the description, pretty basic description. Notice up at the top, we've got three tabs. We've got text, web, and source. You go ahead and click next. So I'm going to just skip the web, because uh, that's pretty much the same thing. And so now we can get to the source page. Now for this cache, there's really nothing unique about the source information. I'll show you kind of more behind the scenes and how this could benefit you uh, in another slide. So go ahead and click next. So here's actually the page for, um, for our event today. Now look at the source. So you can actually see in the source uh, that I'm pulling in images. Um, you can see all of the HTML, um, which is great for uh, those people that like to hide things in the HTML, Jason. <laughs> um, uh, you know, even if it's, you know, if it's a red herring that's hidden in the HTML, you can actually quickly see the HTML without having to, uh, it took me a while to figure out how to do this just on my desktop computer. This is a nice quick way to see what actually is behind the scenes in the HTML. So that's really helpful for some of those puzzle caches that might have information behind the scenes. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. Yes, how can you see the HTML too when you talked about somebody talked about the battery and saved it on the iPhone? Yeah, so we're just talking about the app. As far as um, if you're in your browser, let's see whether you're using Safari or Chrome or Firefox or Explorer. Yes. So there's different ways that they describe that, but it's usually something like page source. Um, is there another? Do you know? Yeah, like right click and view source. Yeah, view source. I can right click on the mouse and then view source. Yeah. So so either view source, page source, something along those lines. You can see HTML. The challenge there is that you get. The whole page is HTML, so you get all of the geocaching.com HTML too. So you have to scroll through a lot to find what the user or what the CEO can put in. Yeah. Is there a way to search on this page source for like user supplied content or anything? So actually, can you go on the computer? You do it to pull it up. You can find all the user stuff. Yeah. So can you go back actually? From those hidden. Yeah. So everything on so in Cashly, everything under source. This is all the user. All the, all the user source. So this doesn't have any of the geocaching.com mm -hmm. HTML. This is only user source. Okay. Yep. So that makes it a little bit easier as well. So you don't have to scroll through all of the um, uh, the geocaching.com page information. Good question. All right. Now I have yet to actually have a good reason to use this, but if any of you cache outside of your country or outside of the U.S., you know, Germany, France, wherever. Um, and you need to translate the description. So these three, and this is pretty consistent throughout the app. These three little dots indicate kind of a, a more option. Um, and so when, it, when I click on that, this is what pops up. I have the option to translate with Google. And if I choose that, then it actually takes me to Google Translate uh, in Safari. Uh, and then we get the, the language and then it, it, here it's detecting the language, it's converting it to English, and then here is the translation. So you don't have to copy and paste and do all those kinds of things. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about waypoints. So uh, if you are working on a multi, or if you've got a, a puzzle that you have when entered the corrected coordinates on, um, on the waypoint screen, uh, 
which is at the bottom of the, so actually, can you go back real quick, a few slides? A few more, a few more. Oh, oh it's up. <laughs> yeah, right, right here is good. So if I scroll down on this, so underneath attributes, which is another thing that the geocaching app does not have, um, if I scroll down, it would give me a waypoints option. And so when I click on that, that's when we get to the, the page that we're gonna see that we were just on. Okay, so, so there'll be a waypoint screen. It'll auto-populate with the waypoint of the cache. Then there'll be an option to click a plus sign where you can add a waypoint. So I'm gonna enter the title of the waypoint. In this case, I called it final. Um, and then here, if I click on the latitude, it'll give me a scrolling option to change the latitude um, and longitude. And then I can choose current location or geocache location just as a shortcut to, um, to just do a preset um, option for, for where I want my, my starting point to be. Then if I choose this, this corrected coordinate um, toggle, it's gonna show that red triangle that I showed you earlier on that map, it's gonna show as a corrected coordinate. Great thing about that is that it also syncs to geocaching.com. If I enter a corrected coordinate here, it's gonna show up on the geocaching.com website as a corrected coordinate and vice versa. If I entered a corrected coordinate on geocaching.com, they will show up as a corrected coordinate in Cachely. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Any questions about that? Does that make sense? Yeah. What do you mean, where does it show up as a corrected coordinate? Does it actually change the coordinate of the actual cache? Yeah, so if you can, can you go back to one of the first slides? On, on geocaching.com. Yeah, so on geocaching.com, um, the way that, if you can think of the way the description page looks when you bring up a geocache, mm -hmm. it'll be, um, uh, the, the coordinates will be underlined. Right. And that's that's where it shows as a corrected coordinate. Uh -huh. And then on the map here, that red triangle in the right. middle of the icon, that indicates that it's a corrected coordinate right. there. No, it won't It won't post it in the log. Okay. That's that. Yeah, it's changing. Yeah, so it's changing. So it's changing it for you. So you're, yeah, it's showing. It's it's your own user content. Um, there is an option to add corrected coordinate to a log, but that, but this does not do that. Yeah. So that's a, so yeah. So notes are an option to enter a corrected coordinate if you just want to, or or whatever text you want to put in the notes page. Actually, changing the coordinate will make it a corrected coordinate so where you can actually see the puzzle final or the multi-final. Or if there was a traditional where someone said, yeah, it's it's not you know, 45 feet away where ground zero is, it's actually right here. And if you put that in, then it'll still show that red triangle. Yeah? You can. So you can add as many waypoints as you want to. Um, Jason will talk about waypoints as well for CGO for Android. I know. So this, <laughs> this is why we're doing this, because there's so much cool stuff that if people have only been using the official geocaching.com apps, you get you just kind of get used to all these workarounds, and you know it's just it's very cumbersome. Um, both of these apps. Um, uh, and in some ways, I will admit that CGO, because it's been around longer, has some cooler features. Cashly will get there. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, there's just some really... So, so when Nick developed this, he looked at the current app and said, there's so much that's missing here. It, it, it just, we, can, we can do this better. And so he realized that he could do it better, and so he is doing it better. Um, all right. So, so let's talk about maps. This is... One of my uh, my favorite features, um, and we're actually getting some people on uh, Periscope, so that's op awesome. So hi everyone, out on Periscope. Uh, I'm actually, if you want to look at the slides, they're posted at bit.ly forward slash Cashly PPT, and I'll give you all that information as well at the end for those of you who are here in the room. Uh, so you can get, you actually can get these slides, and you can download them as a PDF, so you can look at them on your own time. Um, let's talk about maps. So there's a lot of different map options within Cashly. Um, so we're going to talk about the internet connected apps first, and then we'll talk about offline maps. So we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, we have um, Ordnance Survey for the UK, we have OpenStreetMaps, uh, we have Thunder Forest, which um, 
I've not used before. And then we have ArcGIS, which has a topographical map option, which is really, really cool. Um, so let's go ahead. So here's some, some examples. Um, here's an example of what the offline map looks like, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, it's really hard to see, because um, I, I had to zoom in on this picture. This is um, actually Castle Rock. Um, so you can probably barely see that there are actually topographical lines here. There's um, an elevation there. Uh, and here's the satellite flyover map. This is the uh, same map. Actually, these are all the same. This is um, Apple's uh, th kind of 3D satellite flyover map. Um, so if you choose this, one of the cool things that you can do is if you are um, if you have this map pulled up, if you take two fingers and you slide up on the map, it'll create kind of a 3D effect. Has anyone ever used that before? Okay, some of you, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's okay. The nice thing about using that 3D map is if you are in a place like Castle Rock and you're not sure, is this cache like really on top of the mountain? Is it you know on the trail? You can get a little bit more of a 3D view and you can see most likely where that cache is. So you're not either walking off a cliff or um, you know you have to go up a cliff. Um, so, so, so actually go back to the last slide. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm throwing you off. <laughs> yeah. So what, what you could do, so here I've got the Apple Maps selected. So I, you could just click on any of these map options, click done, and then the map um, screen will update with that map type. Okay, now go forward. Uh, next one. All right. Now we're going to talk about navigation. And I, I know I keep saying this. This is when I first downloaded Cashly, this feature blew my mind. Because before, when I was using the official map, for some reason, I always found myself going south and driving south. And so I would try to, like, okay, if it's right on the map, that means I have to turn left on this street and trying to, you know, do all this mental gymnastics to drive to the cache. Um, after I've clicked on navigate to the cache, I can click on this uh, more option, and it gives me routing options. So it'll pull up Apple Maps or Google Maps or Waze or any one of these other GPS um, navigation services if they are loaded onto your iPhone. And then Google Maps or Apple Maps or Waze will actually take you to the cache location, or at least as close as they can. So um, super, super handy. Um, oh, actually, sorry, go back just a second. <laughs> um, so a couple of icons down here. So this tile, this is used in the geocaching app as well. You might recognize that. This changes the map type. Uh, this will lock the map from uh, rotating. This little zoom icon, uh, if you click on that, it would actually either zoom out so you see your location as well as the, the, the cache location, or it will zoom in on the, uh, center in on the, on the target cache. So again, with, with these routing options, these are the only navigation apps that I have actually loaded on my iPhone. If I had TomTom, Tom, that would show up here as well. If I didn't have Waze, it wouldn't show up. Any questions on the, the navigation? Super, super helpful feature. Okay, let's talk about offline maps. Um, this was a, a new part of release 2.0. Um, for those of you who have been following the, uh, the new free geocaching app announcements, they made a big deal about, hey, we've got offline maps now, isn't that wonderful? And CGO and Cashly users were like, yeah, we've had that for quite a while now, forever. Um, and one of the great things about these offline maps is that unlike, and I don't want to get too technical here, but unlike the official app, the, the current geocaching app, uh, which only downloads tile images, so just like a, literally a square image, for the offline lists that you've created, with Cashly, um, you can actually down, download the whole state, so you get all of Colorado. Um, uh, actually, can you click the button again? For less than 80 megabytes, eight, sorry, 80 megabytes. If, if we were to do the tile options with the official app for the whole state, it would be, it would probably overload your phone. Because, uh, again, not to get too technical, uh, the way that uh, Cashly works is it uses what's called, what are called vector offline maps, which are data files versus the traditional tile maps, which are image files. So imagine having a picture at different zoom levels for every little bit of Colorado. It's gonna be thousands and thousands of pictures versus having just 
data that um, can still create the map, and then the whole thing is under 80 megabytes. So you can actually download multiple states, multiple countries, and then you've got that whole offline map. You don't have to worry about being in a new area and not having that particular offline map downloaded. So uh, this is a huge, huge benefit of using Cachely. I think CGO has a similar option um, where it's not going to take up that much room on your phone. Okay, we can go ahead and next. Okay, so let's talk about offline lists. So the benefit of using offline lists, and I had never used these before I started using cash. I just didn't see the point, but now I, I really like it. So it will save battery, uh, it saves data. There's multiple ways to create offline lists. Um, you can also create them on the fly. You don't have to create them um, ahead of time using a, a, you know, using a pocket query or something that you've created in, on the geocaching.com website. Um, anyone use offline lists? Not really. Okay, you might start after I show you how to use them and how simple it is. Um, uh, so for those of you who have used offline lists, what do you use them for typically? My biggest is if I assign a challenge that I qualify for, I'll save it in a signed list. And then as I qualify, I go to that list and, oh, now I qualify for this one, log it to get off the list. Or if I'm going after the trail mix series, I'll make a list of all the trail mix caches and then I can knock them out as I go. Yeah. So another way of looking at it is it, as a, and here we call it a list in CJO, I think it's referred to as folders, but it's a way to organize caches and you can store them offline. So in other words, it's not using your internet connection to get that cache data information. Is it also bookmarks? That's a little bit different. Um, so bookmarks are another way, to, just another way to organize, uh, but they're not, but bookmarks are not automatically offline. Uh, so then, uh, you can dot, you can download them to an offline list. Yep. Go ahead and click next. Oh. <laughs> and my presentation has been sabotaged. <laughs> okay. So if you look at the very, so this is kind of what you would see typically on the bottom of the Cashly page. So we've got a live option, we've got offline, we've got logs, we've got trackables, and we've got more. So if we click on more, this is what's gonna show up. And, oh, actually, can you go back? So we're gonna walk through the different ways of creating offline lists. So the first is through a pocket query. So a pocket query would be what you would actually create on the geocaching.com website. So you put in your criteria, uh, you. Get a pocket query um, again because this is Cashly is interacting with the geocaching.com website. It knows the pocket queries that you have. So then we'll uh, click on the pocket query, um, and then the list is created with the same name as the pocket query. So go ahead and click next. Um, so I'm not getting too much into the weeds with these things. So if you have questions or like want to actually walk through something about any of these things with me, we can certainly do that. Um, this is kind of uh, one of my favorite features. So creating offline lists from the live map. So let's say I'm in, um, well, right here, and I wanna go out into more of the, the, the wilderness, you know, take a hike. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have cell phone signal. Maybe I wasn't planning on going to take a hike, but I'm, I'm going to do that. So while I still have um, an internet connection, I'm gonna create an offline list. So I'm gonna pull up uh, through the search and filter the caches that I want uh, to create an offline list. I'm gonna click on that more button. So first I've, I've pulled up the caches on the map or in the list, I'm gonna click on the more button and I'm gonna uh, click on uh, the save to offline list. So that, that option will pop up after I've clicked on that more button. And I'm gonna choose from all of the caches that have shown up, the visible caches that are on the map um, or any highlighted caches. Um, I'm not going to get into the highlighted caches, but that is because that's kind of a little bit more into the weeds. But usually, you would be choosing all caches or visible caches. Then I'm going to either save those caches to an existing list that I had, or I can create a new list. So here we've got. Uh, so if I've chosen uh, the plus sign, I'm going to create a new list. I'm going to give the list a name. There's 50 offline caches. I can choose just the light cache data, so the just basic cache data, not including logs, or full cache data, including logs, and uh, images as an option as well. 
And then all of those caches that I've selected, they are now stored offline. Uh, you can use your phone, with the, and the GPS will work if you have no internet signal. So the GPS can still work even if you don't have an internet connection, and that's the beauty of the offline list, so that you don't, don't all of a sudden end up somewhere where you realize, wait, I knew there was a cache here, but now my phone's not working, so now I can't see it. And again, you can create this on the go, and so that makes it really easy, one, to save data as well, because you've got everything saved offline, and then and not to have to worry about having an internet signal if you are out in the field. Uh, so we, someone asked about bookmarks. So bookmarks are another way of just keeping tabs on geocaches or organizing geocaches. Uh, you can choose to save something as a bookmark on the geocaching.com website, or um, uh, you can do that from within the app, from within the Cachely app. Either way, uh, we've got these these bookmarks, um, and the, there again, you can save to an offline list. And one of the other features about uh, is you can also export a GPX file. So for instance, if you wanted to export a GPX file and put that GPX file on your GPS device, you can do that by uh, creating a GPX and you can export it and put it into um, Dropbox, for instance. Okay, go ahead and click uh, next. Um, so I talked about creating ad hoc. So if I just pull up one singular cache and I wanna save that to an offline list, if we click on that more, those three dots, we can choose Got the three dots we can choose to save to offline list, and then it's the same steps as before to add to a list. Um, we can also make have decisions on what we do with the lists themselves. So I, you can see some of the lists that I have um, zombies, which are uh, virtuals that have been archived, um, but you can still log them if you know the GC code. Um, so actually, and just a real quick sidebar on this particular bookmark list. And we'll get into this a little bit later. When we go to look at other people's profiles, if they have created public bookmark lists, you can actually use, you can pull those bookmarks and, and make your own list. So I did not create this list. Um, Fear the Fish has this bookmark list. Um, so uh, he actually, I don't know how he did it, but he, was, he managed to pull in virtuals that have been archived into a list. Because the, you know, obviously the, the virtual, I mean, unless it's something that's been removed, the information is still there to log it, it's just not active. So that's why they call it a, a, a zombie. And then I said, hey, that's a really cool idea. I want that bookmark list. And so I download, downloaded that uh, myself into my offline list. Uh, but I can also, if I wanted to, I could merge this into uh, one of my other bookmark lists. I can copy caches from one list and put them into another. I can also delete uh, the cache images if I've got too much data. Um, so there's a lot of different options that you can do even within the lists. Okay, any questions? Anyone overwhelmed? Besides me, because I'm talking so bad. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. So there's there's a lot of um, a lot of things that you can do with Cashly. A lot of things you don't have to do with Cashly. So it's it's a very powerful app, but you don't have to be a super user to take advantage of it. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, um, I'm just a huge fan of what. Um, the developer is doing. Um, when I've had questions, or if I've said, hey, like I, something's not working here, I've sent him a message, uh, either on Twitter or on Facebook, he is really quick to respond, So, uh, which is great. Um, also, if you have questions, I'm also very uh, happy to, to help out as well. We can do that here, or um, uh, you know, my, my username is Ben 59 you can send me a message, whatever, I, I, I just, I want, people to be able to, to it, is, it has made geocaching more fun for me, frankly, so I want to be able to pass it on to other people as well. So let's talk about logging a cache. Um, so from the cache main page, there was an option to navigate. There's also an op option to click on log this cache. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do with the logs, which is great. So you can choose to have uh, some default uh, options such as send log now. Now, I turned this off. Uh, the reason why is because when I'm out in the field and I'm walking around, I don't want to just stop and type out a log for five minutes. I like to write longer logs, and so I don't want to do that necessarily while I'm out on the trail. So I'll just so I have my default as just saving, and then I can go back later, look at my pending geocache logs, and then I can 
write in my logs and then send them at that time. Um, log type. So I, I've, uh, my default is found it. Sometimes I think my default should be DNF. But, um, <laughs> but I have my default, default is found it. Um, also message, and we'll get into this in a, in a few minutes. This is one of the really cool things too. You can actually have templates. So if you look at any of my logs, you'll see some of the same information found with Cashly for iOS. Thank you, you know, fill in the blank cash owner for the cash. This is fine number, you fill in the blank. And those are all template options that I've created within Cashly. And we'll talk about how to do that in just a second. There is one more option uh, that's cut off here about uh, encrypting the log entry if you want to, if you have spoiler information. Um, but some of the other options in here you'll see, you can favorite a cache very easily. Uh, you can add a coordinate to a log. So um, that came up earlier. That, that's, don't, so having a corrected coordinate does not mean that it, that's going to go into the log. You can also do trackable drops or visits all within Cachely. So let's talk actually about logging those trackables. So if I click on that trackable drop visit, it'll show me what I've got in my inventory. Um, and then I can choose to drop them all off or have them all visit, or I can choose individual um, options for each trackable. Uh, so you, like I said, I, if you have a couple, so in this case, I just have two that were pending. So you'll see this little icon here. Um, that, so I've got, I, know, I know that I've got two logs that I need to actually finish writing and sending off. And then I've got those pending geocache logs right there. Again, that's great if you're out on the trail and you don't want to stop and type out a message beyond TFTC every time you find something. You just want to keep going and going. You can just hit, hit save and you don't have to remember you know, which ones did I find and which ones did I not find. It's really, really easy to, uh, to save them and then, and then go later. Uh, and then in your iOS settings, if badges are turned on for the app, you'll see the number of pending logs on the Cashly app icon. So from your home screen of your phone, it'll show a number. Uh, in this case, if, if this was still two, it would show a number two on my iPhone home screen. So I know I've got to actually go in and log those. And it'll save the date and time of when you actually clicked save. So if I click on it and hit save and I go back two days later, it's not going to say that I found that two days later. It'll be the same original date and time. Um, so let's talk more about those log defaults. So this is in the settings. So uh, more kind of gets you down here. We'll get you into the settings. Um, you'll see that there's that send log now option that I talked about. Send as a field note. I really haven't used that much, um, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, there's the log type and then the log text. So if we want to change the log text, which is some of those template options. So here's what I start off with. Uh, can you click the next? So one of the things that I recommend is that if you are going to do this, actually build in some space so that it's easy to actually go in and write your own personalized message for that cache. This is then kind of like my signature. So, uh, and then I've got, if you click here, it'll give me a list of keyword options. So I've got, in this case, uh, the owner name. Um, I've got the my, my personal find count found with Cashly app for iOS. I could put in the, the time or the date or you know any one of these options then into uh, the log text, and then that's my default. So if you if you see caches that I found, you'll probably see some of the same information, but it's going to be populated with that specific cache information. Um, any questions on the, that log, those log defaults? Okay. Um, let's talk about trackables. So uh, this is another one of those tabs that's at the bottom. Uh, you can easily find trackables by searching for the, the TB code. You can see your inventory or what you, uh, what you own. You can create logs specifically for that last, um, uh, for that, for that uh, particular trackable. If you click on it, you can view the travels. You can see their travels on the map. You can review the goal of, of the trackable. Um, so some, some great options in there that do not exist uh, in much depth with the official app. Okay, next. Okay. Um, so this is one of my other favorite options. So I, I've mentioned this a couple of times, and some of you may see your names up here. <laughs> um, so, uh, so friends. So this is separate from the geocaching.com website 
friends, where you have to invite a friend and they have to accept your friend. Um, this is a way that you can uh, you can stalk anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> you do have to enter their specific username. Um, yeah, so their exact username, and then you can click on their name to view their profile and stats. You can see, you can read their last logs. You can look at their their hides. Um, uh, you can look at their bookmarks. You can see their souvenirs. You can see their photos that they've uploaded. Like I said, it's a great way to stalk people. <laughs> uh, not that I'm, in, not that I'm encouraging that. I'll be the stalking event. Yeah. <laughs> it's breaking, yeah. Hey, it's all. <laughs> It's all public information. <laughs> all public information. So no. <laughs> um, at any rate, so here's my profile. So you can see my number of my finds. Uh, if I, I clicked on this. I could see uh, the hides that I've done. I can see them on a map or on a list. Uh, I can read my past logs, look at the trackables that I've uh, found. So number of favorite points remaining out of the ones that I've earned. Uh, you can see the souvenirs. You can see a lot of the. Uh, you can see the actual description and the pictures of the souvenirs. Um, I talked about bookmarks already. Uh, if I keep scrolling down, I can see the, uh, the gallery of pictures I've uploaded. Uh, clicking on this will take you to your geocaching.com profile on Safari, and then I can see all the different found cache types. Now, unfortunately, these are not clickable. So the only ones that are clickable are the ones that have those arrows on the side. So these are just stats. I can't actually look at which virtual caches I've found just by clicking on that. Same with um, the hide cache types. These are not clickable. But this is really great if you want to see, um, uh, you know, if you really like someone's hides, you want to see uh, what else they might have hidden in that area. It's a, a quick way to do it. Um, uh, it's, it's fun to see what uh, people have favorited. Uh, if, you know, or pictures that they might have uploaded. Uh, obviously, you know, one of the reasons why I think we love doing geocaching is the community that it creates, and this is just another way to foster that community. So go ahead and uh, click next. Yeah, so in a profile page, you can view the logs. So these are my logs. Um, so actually, two things. You can click on a profile, you can click on logs to see other people's logs. If you click on logs right here, then you can um, view your own logs. Uh, and this is true both on for your friends and for yourself. If I click on this GC code, it'll actually take me to that cache description page, which is also, so like I said, if you, uh, you want to see what someone else found recently and you're looking at their logs, you can click on the GC code. It'll take you to that particular uh, geocache description. Now, I talked at the beginning about the limitations of the API. Um, one of the limitations is that it will only load 50 caches at a time on the map or, um, or anywhere for that matter. So uh, if you want to see more um, finds and hides, you have to click the refresh button. Um, also, uh, and two lab lovers, I profiled you here because <laughs> I've done this more than once. Um, instead of, uh, if you want to message a friend, instead of phoning a friend, you can click on this envelope up here. It'll take, that'll take you to the geocaching.com website message center. Okay, go ahead and click next. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, so I talked about, um, let's see, you can see the favorite caches, you can see those public bookmarks and add them to your list. You can click link to geocaching.com profile. Any questions about the friends feature and why you might use it for good? <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's talk about settings, and we're almost done. Um, so, for those of you, uh, I've got a, a brother-in-law who's Canadian. He loves using the metric system. He can use the metric system. Um, that, there was that cache radius that I talked about on the live maps, where you can see the point tenth of a mile or point one miles around that particular cache, so you know what areas are open. Um, the, some of the I just usually leave all of these on the prevent map rotation, clear map on refresh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's a, the, in the settings. There's those log defaults that we talked about. Um, D, DNF database. You can show uh, the DNF. Sorry, the, the cache type on the map. Uh, you can choose to delete your DNF database if you don't want to be reminded of your DNFs. Um, so different options there. So what next? 
if you haven't already, download Cashly. Um, again, still it's only for iPhones, but it really is $5 well spent, especially when you consider all the features that this offers versus what the, um, the regular geocaching app offers, especially since the classic app is going away. Uh, it, I really believe it is a superior iOS geocaching experience. Yeah, more features to come. Um, uh, Nick, the developer, um, uh, is constantly working on new features. I'm one of his beta testers, which means I get to kind of test things out before the release to the public, which is really fun. Uh, there's a help section in settings. So if you're not sure about what something means, there's a lot of information there. Also the website, there's um, a help forum. Um, and yes, just get outside and don't get frustrated with the limitations of the official app again. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. I hope this was helpful. And like I said, if you have any questions now or later, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. And um, again, I said this before, but if you want to look at the presentation, uh, all, all this information that I provided for you, you can get it as a PDF, which means you do not have to have PowerPoint. Uh, the website address uh, is, uh, if you just type this into your browser, it's bit period ly and then forward slash, so this slash, capital C A C H L Y, so Cashly, and then up, uppercase P, uppercase P, uppercase T for PowerPoint. What's that? Yeah, we'll go ahead and pass the sign-in sheet around. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, um, I, don't, I don't know if we, did you finish the, uh, the, the matrix? No, not yet. Okay, so one of the things that came up um, uh, when I was working on creating this whole presentation, uh, Roby said, hey, why don't you put together a matrix <laughs> of comparing CGO to Cashly to the official app? And at first I said, I don't think so. <laughs> and then I said, I'll make a list of features. And I said, you know what, that's not good enough. I actually am going to make a matrix. So I did. Uh, so it's not quite finished yet. Um, but uh, ultimately I will make a, 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 we're working on finalizing a matrix that has kind of a grid of all different types of features and whether they exist in Cashly or CGO or the official app. And that might also help your decision about whether to buy or not. Um, with that link that I told you about, that's actually going to take you to um, a, drop a Dropbox folder, um, and that is ultimately going to be, um, hopefully within the next couple of days, that matrix will be in that folder as well. So just another way of, of comparing all the different uh, features and benefits of the apps. So we're going to take a 15-minute break or so and then turn it over to Jason for the CGO presentation. Cool. Thank you.